What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Redneck Industry Channel and today uh, I'm going to teach you guys um, my tips and my tricks on how to uh, tan uh, coon hides like this. Um, I've had this up for maybe, I don't know, a few hours. It's fairly fresh. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to go over it. I'm going to kind of give you guys a little bit of um, tips and tricks on how to flush them because coons are very, very 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 hard to do um but uh well it, it for the beginner they're hard to do if you if you're more experienced and uh you kind of have a more experience with uh, fleshing and all that kind of stuff it's it, it's a little bit easier but still these uh, raccoons are very very fatty very very oily and greasy and um yeah so we're just gonna jump right into it all right so what you guys are gonna need to do this coon from start to finish so i'm talking from the moment you get out of the trap or you get it, uh, you shoot it or whatever, once you get it home, get it all ready to be skinned, you guys should have a skinning gimbal. Um, that's kind of a funny word, but that's what it's called. So once you guys have it up there, you guys are gonna want a very, very good sharp skinning knife, like this one here. Either that or I'll use a um, an X-Acto knife, which is what I normally use, um, or a box cutter. This is also what I use for fleshing, and I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, you guys are gonna want some sharpening blocks, um, and to go with that, you want some WD-40 just to keep your block lubricated. Um, but yeah, so now with the, with the fleshing, um, like I said, you're gonna want the knife, um, the two blocks, and the WD-40, um, whoops, and, um, I also use a power washer, which I will show in one second. Right, right so now. this is the power washer I use. Um, I'm pretty sure you can see that there, 1800 PSI. And what I do is I just went along on the coon and blew most of the um, most of the fat and stuff off. Say hi. Um, but yeah, so I, I blew most of the fat and stuff off. Works fairly well. Um, another thing you guys are gonna need is a fleshing board. So I made this one out of an old board because I am too cheap to buy a flashing board and for my smaller coons I made this with my chainsaw this right here is just um, a piece of wood um, that I cut with the saw and sanded down um, and it has a little bit of thickness to it as to where this one is just a board like that but uh, both of them work good for me I don't want us to go out and spend 70 or 80 bucks on a, a flashing board if I can make one at home that'll work just the same and some of you guys might say oh well it's not the same well, you know what? To me, it is the same, and it does the exact same thing that I needed to do that a $70 flushing board would do. Um, now, I was kind of experimenting a little bit at the start um, of using this uh, pressure washer because I was when I was out coyote hunting one day, I was reading a trapping forum, and they said a lot of the guys do use uh, pressure washers to get it off. Um, I don't have a gas pressure washer. I just have this. I picked it up at Canadian Tire. It is a Simmons right there, 1800 PSI, and it does what I need to do for the most part. Um, up around the head that I cut the head off, this is for uh, just a personal project, so I'm not bringing it to the fur trade or anything. But up uh, where the head was up here, um, you guys are going to want to get in with your, with your knife really good, or your fleshing knife, what have you, and get all that um, uh, fat off because the pressure washer, I found that it has a very, very hard time getting into that area so that is just some tricks that I use uh, for fleshing to make it easier um, with your fleshing knife you want to make sure your knife is very 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 sharp um, and uh, yeah so now we're gonna get into the the tanning of all right so next um, this is the tanning formula that I use um, it is deer hunter and trappers high tanning formula pretty straightforward um, you can uh, do deer um let's see deer coyote fox raccoon squirrel rabbit muskrat and beaver with it also you can do elk um caribou beaver and even snakeskin obviously we are doing a raccoon um so the instructions on the back uh i kind of go by them but uh, i also kind of do it my own way so um, what I usually do is I get a big uh, tub of salt, or sorry, a big tub and coat this in salt. 
Uh, I'm looking, I do not have the box down there, but it is just regular um, iodized salt. You know what guys say all the time? Well, you have to use non-iodized. There's some people say, oh, you have to use iodized salt. You know what? Honest to God, it does not make a difference whatsoever. Um, I've used non-iodized, I've used iodized, just to see if it um, makes any difference. It does not make a difference whatsoever. So you bundle it up, uh, skin together with the salt and the skin uh, touching together, and you leave it for about, um, I'd say six to 12 hours. Um, and then you get a big warm tub of water, soak the hide in there, and then wash that off for another maybe six hours. You don't obviously do that the whole time. You just set it in there and leave it. Um, and then uh, what I do is I take um, Dawn dish soap or uh, any really, really good degreaser sunlight dish soap and I take it into the laundry room. We have the big, uh, excuse me, the laundry tubs in there and I give this guy a really, really good wash. Now with the raccoons, um, they're very, very greasy, and very, very oily. Um, so uh, you wanna give them a few good washes. Um, I'd say one or two times I've washed him about, and yes, it was a him actually. I've washed him about uh, t two or three times. And then today, or tonight I should say, I uh, washed him with um, Dove shampoo and conditioner just to get a good nice finish on the fur. Um, and then I went over him a little bit and uh, got the rest of the fat around. I also cut off his head right out of his neck. And uh, I know that the, the fur trades don't accept this, but to be honest with you guys, they aren't, the heads they can't use anyway. They're just looking from pretty, pretty much from the neck down um, to the tail. And I don't know for sure if they use the tail or not. Um, I could be mistaken, but uh, yeah. So another thing too, after um, I've, it's dried out um, and everything like that, after it's been washed and dried, I like to go over it once with a, um, just a wire brush on the end of a, a drill, just to thin the skin down a little bit more, get a little bit of that excess fat off. And yes, I know that this, um, this uh, fleshing job isn't the per most perfect job, but once I get it tanned, I will go over it with this again and um, thin it down a little bit more. So now we're gonna get into the tanning part. All right, so now we're gonna get into uh, the tanning part. So um, what they say on this for this kind of um, tanning formula is to leave it in warm water uh, for 30 minutes just to thin it down a little bit, which I usually do, and then um, you're good to go. So I'll show you guys uh, what I'm gonna do um, and how I'm gonna tan this guy. So you wanna take a paintbrush. I've already used this for tanning lots, and I've taken this um, old BB uh, tin, like a BB gun tin, and I just poured this, uh, the tanning formula out into that. I take my brush, clean it off a little bit. I'll just take my brush, get that stuff. Obviously, I've already tanned this guy, but I'll give you guys an example. So you just, I usually like to start from the top and brush down. You can also do this with your hands too, and a pair of rubber gloves. And I've done, I've done both. This is my first time using the paintbrush and I find using the paintbrush spreads it out more evenly. Um, those uh, two hides up there were done by hand and they turned out just fine as well. So um, you guys wanna get all over and you can see right there, I'm gonna have to take the wire brush to that and thin it down. Um, but I even, yeah, you guys gotta even get it right into the tail, um, all the bottoms, the creases everything i cut i i like to when i'm doing my own personal projects i like to cut the arms off but you want to get the armpit um everywhere that you, there is skin you want to cover with the tan the tanning formula excuse me and then what i like to do is i like to place hang it up first off and then i like to place it um underneath a board so you can see all the excess tanning formulas dripping off also that's a lot of water too because you want to tan when the hide is moist and uh and uh, not 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 soaked or saturated, but you just want to do it when it's dampened and moist still. And uh, I know that's a funny word, but uh, then you want to let it drip dry as you're tanning it. Um, and if you let your hides dry out uh, before tanning, that is fine. Just give them a little bit of a spray down with a hose or even with one of those little squirt guns, um, and that does just fine as well. So um, I'll give you guys an example of what. A finished tanning product looks like uh, in just one second right now. All right guys, so this is a little possum that I did. Um, I know it's not the same as a raccoon, 
but uh, you're doing the same steps. Um, so you still gotta skin it, you gotta you gotta flesh it, and you gotta uh, tan it, depending if you're bringing it to the fur market or not. Um, but uh, possums are a little bit easier to do, um, just being that they don't have as much um, fat on them, and the little fat that they do have just comes really, really easily off um, with your fleshing knife. Um, another thing too is you don't need to have a big fleshing knife once you pull with your hand. This, this kind of knife will work, trust me, it will work. This is the only thing that I've used. I haven't ever bought a, a, a fleshing knife. And a lot of the guys around here that trap and um, hunt for fur, obviously for me too, but their main revenue is fur, um, use a knife like this. They don't use, um, they don't use the actual fleshing knives. They just use a regular hunting knife like this, sharpen it down, they hone it down. Some guys grind them down to whatever point they like, to whatever point is easiest to get the, the, the fat off. And that, that's what works for them. And honestly, I have to agree with them. It works perfect. Um, you don't need to go spend crazy amount of money on, uh, on some trapping store online or go into a store and uh, spend, I don't know, 40, whatever. I haven't really even looked. I'm assuming like 40 bucks on a, on a friggin' tanning or a, a fleshing knife when something like that will work just fine. But like I said, this is what it's gonna look like after tanning, so it's all really pliable, really nice and soft. Um, another thing too is you try, you wanna try to steer away from getting the tanning formula on the fur because uh, generally once you have it tanned, you can't really wash it, um, or at least as far as my knowledge goes. But uh, I'll show you guys the inside of them. So that's what the inside of it would look like. I don't know how well you guys can see that. See if I can make it focus right there. Um, but nice and yellow, kind of like a, uh, a buckskin uh, moccasin or something like that. And this guy's a bit dirty because when I was tanning him, as soon as I put the tanning formula on him, he fell over into onto the garage floor, which is obviously pretty dirty because I do a lot of my taxidermy in here. Um, I try to brush them off as clean as possible, but um, yeah. Um, another thing too I want to touch on is if you're doing like a coyote or something like that and you want to tan them up and get them all nice, uh, you guys want to cut out the ears on the coyotes. Um, there's cartilage behind the ear, like we have cartilage in our ear that you want to get out. And you guys want to try to get up right into the nose area. I know this isn't a coyote, but it's all animals are are fairly alike when it comes to flashing um, except if it's big game it might be a little bit different but um, yeah so that's basically it for this video um, hope it was a help a little bit thank you very very much for watching um, comment down below what you guys want me to see what sorry what you want to see me do I should say and um, yeah hope you guys are staying safe and healthy during these times um, we'll get through this together I know it might suck right now but it is what it is. But yes, like I said, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys later.